Oil and gas companies are shutting down their operations as wildfires continue to wreak havoc in northern Alberta on Monday. Penn West Exploration is active in the area surrounding Slave Lake at Alta, a town that has been devastated by the fast-moving flames. The Calgary-based company has shut between 25,000 to 30,000 barrels per day of production, Chief Executive Officer William Andrews said here in an interview. Just over 100 Penn West staff live in the region and are still safe and accounted for. Penn West is planning to do a flyover its facilities to take stock of the damage. We are not putting anybody on the ground yet. We do not want to take chances, any sort of... So when we got the call or, or the sight line, I think that most people got that uh, the fire was coming right to the edge of town. Um, we started deciding how we were going to make that last stand. So uh, put all the trucks and all the firefighters on the 12th Street and 13th Street and hooked up the fire hydrants and started flowing water and um, deciding how we were going to make that last stand look. Um, evacuated the rest of the people with the other emergency agencies that were there and then just started spraying water. Um, as the, I'll call it the cloud because I don't know what else to call it, uh, smoke and, and embers hit us. Uh, we just hid behind the trucks in the waterways and tried to not burn. <laughs> uh, in all the time that I've been doing this, I've never seen anything remotely close to this. Uh, it happened so fast, it was so hot, so smoky. Um, it just, it, it went from a small grass fire to a, an inferno like nothing I've ever seen in such a short amount of time. Um, we just tried to prepare and get ready for what was coming. In the last 15 uh, minutes or so before it actually hit, it, it was just get all the people out. You know, we got to save everybody that we can find and get them out. Um, then once that started to happen, the focus was to get the firefighters lined up to put out as many spot fires as we could and save as many houses as we could. And uh, the security and safety of the firefighters was paramount in my mind. Um, you know, the job is to stay and fight fires. It's not to die while you're doing it. So we tried to make sure that we could provide safety for the people that stayed. For a volunteer firefighter, you sign up to help people, and, and this was, we knew this was going to quickly become a, a great way to try and help people, to try and save homes. Uh, what it later turned into with the firestorm and all the homes lost, um, turned into many small battles, um, sometimes unsupported. Uh, you know, there was not enough equipment or water to go around. The firefighters had to dig in and find places where they could stop loss and and save the community. Um, at one point, I remember we decided where our defensive perimeter was going to be, and and uh, the firefighters on the radio and at the fire hall just you could tell that they were ready to make that happen. We'd, we'd lost enough homes and businesses, and we weren't going to lose any more. And uh, we started making great strides as firefighters from all across northern Alberta and southern Alberta started to come in in the following hours and support those those people that did that work. Uh, you don't sign up to, to have a 72 hour firefight with no sleep and not enough equipment and not enough water, and, but they did it and uh, they're, they're proud that they did it and they're waiting to get everybody back to Slave Lake. Meanwhile, Exxon Energy Corporation said it has shut down its 921 barrels of oil equivalent daily production at its Martin Mountain site. Moving on, a bid to salvage BP's Arctic Exploration Alliance with Kremlin-controlled oil group Rosneft appeared to be in the balance after a midnight deadline to complete the deal had passed last night. British oil company was in a three-way discussion with Rosneft and Alpha Access Renova, the consortium of Russian billionaires controlling half of TNK BP, BP's existing Russian 50-50 venture. They were attempting to hammer out a deal that would satisfy AAR and still allow BP to pursue the Rosneft alliance. The oligarchs, led by Mikhail Friedman, has successfully blocked the alliance on the courts at the basis it breached an agreement BP had made with the TNKBP, giving the joint venture exclusive rights to pursue opportunities for BP in Russia. AAR's refusal to back down has left BP and Rosneft with little option but to buy AAR's 50% stake in the joint venture. 
which would remove the opposition to their alliance or risk the deal collapsing. However, as the midnight deadline passed last night, the three parties were haggling over the price and exact structure of the deal. Complicating things further, any agreement had to be endorsed by Rosneft's owner, the Russian government. Some analysts took the lack of an announcement as indication that the two sides would continue to negotiate revised terms for the deal. That's all for now. We'll be back soon as we have some more news making waves. See you then.